Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum in one verse. O you who believe, fast, fasting has been prescribed for you as it has been prescribed for those before you so that you will gain taqwa la'allakum tattaqun so that you will gain taqwa. The qurbani that we did last week, Allah says, لا ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولكن يناله التقوى منكم The flesh, not the blood, it reaches Allah but the taqwa from you is what reaches Allah In countless verses, Allah speaks about وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينِ مُتَّقِينِ مُتَّقِينِ Those who have taqwa, those who have taqwa The ones who have taqwa are the ones who they will get the everlasting good and they will be shunned, saved from any type of punishment As for just simply being a Muslim, that does not necessarily mean that you will not be punished. May Allah protect us all. There are some Muslims who they will have to enter Jahannam first. Burn out whatever it is that they have, and then they will enter Jannah. But the Muttaqeen are those who they will enter Jannah without any torments from the, the, the grave or from Jahannam. So Taqwa is something that we look for. Normally now, when we hear taqwa, we translate it as God consciousness, which is a, a very accurate translation, I would say. God consciousness. But at the same time, to understand what is God consciousness, we need to understand a little bit. It's, it's not just, you know, like when we say Allah, when we say ilah, God, when we say la ilaha illallah, there is no ilah besides Allah. When we translate it as there is no God but Allah, it kind of confines it, it confines our mind to God. Whereas ilah has a bigger meaning and I, inshallah if I remember we go wrong it is a little bit. So this, similarly God consciousness, it has a, a deeper meaning. God consciousness, it indicates, the word God consciousness, it indicates to the fact that it is something of the heart. And a nice interesting point to note is that based on the Islamic text, intellect, aql, it is in the heart, it's not in the brain. The brain is not the source of intellect. The heart is the source of intellect, aql. Lahum qulubun la ya'qiluna biha. They have hearts, but they don't use their aql by means of it. So this is the proof that the aql is here. So what, it is, what is the connection between the heart and the brain? The heart, it deals with things in a holistic manner. Your, your, your greater outlook on anything. Philosophy. Your philosophy on anything. For example, a simple thing as the, the window being open. A window. What is your outlook? What does your heart tell you when you see a window? Is to open it. Eh? But now, when you think about it, Should we open this window? Well, then your brain now would start a compute. And it would start saying, now, well, we have one AC. It would cause problems to the AC and whatnot and whatnot. So the, the, the holistic and the greater thinking, the, the, the kulliyat, in Arabic, we call it kulliyat. Thinking about things in a general manner. That is what happens in the heart. And then in a split snap of a second, the information goes to the brain and the brain computes the details it decipher whether we should do so and so or so and so or so and so it, it goes through the finer details and then the brain sends message to the different limbs and it says okay I want to pick up this bottle of water so your hand now your, your, your hand, it, it goes jump from your heart to your brain to your hand and you pick it up same thing with your tongue when it is things going on in your brain it, happen, it, it is executed from your heart that is why your brain it reflects on your heart you know how did they say what your heart telling you What your heart desire? The inclinations of the heart. Your heart telling you to do so and so. It's because that is where the aql is. Why are things going on in this? this We're well, explaining this one. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Iman ha huna. Iman is here. Iman is in the heart. So what that means? That means that your philosophy, Iman is directly connected to your philosophy, your way of thinking. That is why it is called God consciousness. It is an action, if you want to call it, an action of the heart. Taqwa is an action of the heart. Taqwa is not the salat that you're performing. 
and the Hajj and the Qurbani that you're doing. That is why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there are many people who, perform, who fast, but they get nothing from their fast except hunger. And there are many people on the, we could also say there are many people who they do Qurbani and they get nothing from it except a bloody clothes and a full belly. Why? Because taqwa is not the actions. Taqwa is something inside here. So you cannot gauge a person's taqwa. As a matter of fact, no one could gauge another person's taqwa. Nobody could do that. We cannot look at someone and say, wait boy, this man is a real muttaqi person, a real God-fearing person. We can't do that. You know why? Because the actions, it is not taqwa. The actions is the results of taqwa. But it is not an accurate gauge. Because sometimes a person could be showing outward good appearances, performing salat, coming to the masjid, but really and truly he's a hypocrite. His heart says otherwise. So therefore the actions, it is not taqwa. Taqwa is inside. So we cannot judge another person's taqwa. So therefore, for us now, we are the ones who could judge our taqwa. We are the only ones who could do that. And Allah says in the Quran about taqwa, He speaks about taqwa, He says about the muttaqin. Therefore, we should be conscious of ourselves as to whether am I a muttaqi person? Am I a God-fearing person? Am I a God-conscious person? Now, to gauge this now, since we understand that it is not our outward actions, we cannot look at what we do. We cannot look at the zakat that we give and these things. Instead, we need to gauge our taqwa based on, since it's an action of the heart, we need to base it, look at, uh, uh, examine our taqwa, analyze our taqwa based on other actions of the heart. Other things which negate taqwa. Sicknesses of the heart, we call it. For example, doing things for show. So if it is, for example, you're performing salat, and someone walks in and they decide to, you, you feel now, it comes in your mind that, okay, let me make sure I'm doing this properly. When you're home, you're performing salat in a haphazard, hasty manner. When you're outside in the masjid, you're performing salat in a different manner. Well, then that shows you, would got, you are the only person who could judge that because you know your inside and outside life. So you, from this, you could judge that you are doing something for sure. It shows that you, you don't have, you're lacking in taqwa. When you're, 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 reciting, you're reciting Quran, same thing, doing actions, as well as withholding from actions. Eh? And this is called show. Show, doing things for show, is something, is a type of shirk. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna yasir al riya shirk. The slightest bit of riya is shirk. Why? Because when the person, when you're performing salat, and when the person walk in, you decide to, you know, keep it good. Make sure it's good. So therefore, you went from performing salat for Allah, for, for Allah to performing salat for that person. Same thing if it is you performing salat or you're reading Quran and you was reading with a real nice voice. And then someone comes in and you tone down your voice and you, you, you stop reading like that. So you stopped reading because this person came. So that's why I say it's doing actions for other people as well as stopping, withholding from doing actions for other people. The reason you stopped is because this person came, right? However, if it is you are reading Quran for the sake of Allah in the first place, well then it doesn't matter whether this person comes or it has nobody there. So that is a gauge. And that is, that is one of the enemies. That is one of the things that is break down taqwa. So it's something in the heart. Show, doing things for show. Pride is another sickness of the heart. What is pride? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us what is pride. He said, Batr al wa nas. It is refusing to accept what is truth and putting down people, despising people, looking down at others. So someone comes to you and he admonishes you for something. Now the first thing you see is your nafs, eh? Is your nafs. Is your nafs is the, is the enemy towards taqwa. The first thing when someone comes and tells you something, they shine you up. They talk to you in a manner that you didn't like. So you think to yourself now that this person insulted me. But the person genuinely, like just, like, you just take an example, the person genuinely came and gave you some advice. You say, brother, you mustn't do that. That is not, that is not right. How you could be doing them kind of thing. 
and you feel in your heart now, but this man should not be talking to me like that. You see why you're feeling so? Why are you feeling so? Scrutinize it. Why are you thinking so? Because you think that I'm not supposed to be dealt with like that. You're thinking big of yourself. If instead, on the other hand, when the person came and he advised you, you, are, you understand, yes, this is an advice coming from Allah because he is showing me something which is wrong in myself. So I should rectify this. Allah is, going, Allah is sending, sending this person to advise me because I have something wrong in me. But instead, you forget the person advising you and you, 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 you pump up your chest and you tell your brother, you fell up, boy, leave me alone now, I'm to you. So you refuse to accept the hack and you put it on the person. That's pride. You can't take advice. You can't take correction. So that shows that you have an enemy to taqwa, your nafs. You gauge your taqwa, gauge your taqwa. Likewise, another enemy of the nafs. You see, your nafs is the thing. Eh? The, your nafs is, the, is, the, is like a wolf inside you. You have different types of stages of the nafs. Mention in Quran as well, you have the nafs shahwaniya, the nafs that always goes behind shahwat. Like for the kuffar, they just follow everything that they want to do. Whatever you want to do, you do it. Then you have the nafs, which it is, it is nafsul ammara, the nafs that in the nafs al ammara tun bisu, the nafs, it commands you, it demands that you do wrong thing. And then you have the nafs lawama, nafsul lawama. That is the nafs, when you do something, it starts to blame you. Oh God, why you do that for you? You start to feel remorse. So that is a good, that is, that is, a, that is a okay nafs to have. But that is the nafs. That is the nafs inside there. And that is the thing that we need to fight. We need to go against. These are the qualities of the nafs. The pride, the looking for fame. You're in a workplace, and the job that you do, that you, do you take, how, how to say you, you, you try to look good. I mean, yes, it's good. It's good to do things good. But you see, when you're doing it for the intention of looking good alone, well, then there's a problem. So show doesn't only have to do with ibadat as well. Show is with everything, every aspect of our life. And this is something that we, in, in our times, we, uh, we, we plagued with, especially when you have mobile and social platform and anything. Everybody posting up everything. Posting up the food that they're eating, posting up the charity that they're giving, posting up the good things that they're doing, going in front of the car and, and, and putting up the hands, so making do and taking, making that profile. Come now, man. What it is you're doing it for? So your actions that have showing it. So you're doing things that is a that is a sickness of the heart. So therefore, you have these sicknesses. Gauge for yourself. Am I a muttaqi person? Would I qualify for those who? Jannah is written for them without any punishment. Analyze ourselves. One other uh, sickness of the nafs, which I would uh, give a little advice on the remedy for it, something where we could help, is that of the love of the dunya. Love of the dunya is a, is a, is a, is a sickness of the heart. It is something which goes against taqwa. Many verses in the Quran. Allah blames, Allah talks critically, Allah speaks against loving the dunya. See, it goes back to this word ilah now. So the word ilah, when we say la ilaha illallah, what is ilah? Ilah is anything that your heart is connected to. And you run towards it in times of need, desire. Ilah is anything that your heart is connected to. Hence the reason the dunya could be taken as a ila, your hawa, your desires, your opinions. Hawa means opinions as well. Could be taken as ila. What about that person who takes his hawa, his, his hawa as his ila? He takes his desires, his opinions. What is, what is hawa? Hawa is not just when you want to go and commit zina, you want to commit adultery, no. Hawa means your opinions, what you think. That is why in the books of fiqh, some scholars who they are against taqlid, they would say that you must not take from different mazahib because it, it would lead to following your hawa. The word they use is hawa, it would lead to following your hawa. Means that you take in from these things, these different things, but at the end, it is your opinion as to which is better. 
So, the point I'm bringing here is that the word hawa refers to your opinion. To be precise, your opinion when it is not supported and backed by the Sharia. When it is not in accordance to the opinion of Allah and the Messenger. That is hawa as well. And that is what goes, that's what's going on in the world today. And they preach this, they push this agenda. Everyone is, is, is free to their own opinion. You have your opinion, I have my opinion, no problem. No, it doesn't work like that. If your opinion is not in accordance to Allah and the Rasul and the Sharia, well, it is not considered. Simple as that. It sounds, it sounds harsh and radical, but that is what it is. There's nothing such as freedom of, of opinion. Nothing such as that. There is a, 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 a cloud. There is, a, there is just an agenda to push in. And the reason to push in this is to, to allow people to follow their, their, their shahwat, to follow their desires. So because now, I see a video recently where they're asking a little child, and the child in, in, in probably about 12 years old, asking the child, what is, um, um, what is gay? And the child gave a response. And then they ask the child, would you like to be gay? And the child say, well, the child, I can't remember the exact answer he gave, but the child gave an answer like, ah, well, I'm not too really sure right now. So they're giving the child an opinion. Why did they didn't give the child an opinion when he was now born as to what kind of milk he wanted to buy? Nestum or some other thing. And why did they didn't give the child an opinion when they wanted to go kindergarten or primary school? Which was, what school they want to go? But they decided and they pushed the child into using a certain type of milk, drinking a certain something, going to a certain school, because they understand that the child can't have an opinion. But now when they get bigger and they think to themselves that their intellect is so much that they can have their own opinions, well, they're going about using their opinions. So now that same opinion tells them that if a man wants to marry a man, there is no problem because he ain't causing no harm to anybody. If a man wants to have relations out of marriage, there's no problem because he, it is consensual. It's not, it's not that he, he, uh, he encroaching on the rights of someone else. So you come up with the whole LGBTQ and the whole, whole big thing that is being pushed worldwide now. Why? How, what it goes down to? What's the root of it? The root of it is people following their own opinions. And they're thinking about things and they're coming up to deductions and they say, well, okay, well, yeah, that is my opinion. You can't, have, you can't tell me anything about it. So they are taking, literally, they are taking their hawa as their ila. That is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, dunya sijnul the, 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 the world is a prison to the believer. And the dunya is such a prison, is such a prison where you're not just confined by rules, of outward things, uh, uh, garments and actions, but you can find by rules of the heart as well. You can't just think what you want to think. You have to see what Allah and the Rasul says to think about so and so. Only then would your, your opinion be accepted and correct if it is in accordance. If it is not correct, well then you must leave that, your opinion, and accept what Allah and the Rasul says. And if it is you do that, well then you have a sign of taqwa in your heart. And if it is you refuse to accept it, well then you, it goes back to pride. Remember what we said pride was? Were you pushing away haq? You refuse to accept the haq. So the love of the dunya, including in the dunya, is your hawa, your own opinions. Time, mobile, and the mobile is the biggest fitna right now. You know, going back to the LGBT, LGBTQ thing, the mobile is the means by which our country, our small speck of an island, Trinidad and Tobago, that is the, the, the mobile is the means by which we became accepting to LGBTQ. To the extent that you cannot go and talk about any gay and sodomite outside there right now. Back in the days, they used to sing songs about them. They used to sing songs about them, against them. Now, they singing songs that people in China are jumping up to. That is how we get. And how we get so? We get so because of the mobile. If it was we were left, because remember we are on an island, we are on a speck of island. If it is we were left by ourselves, we would have still been quote-unquote backward. And we would have still not accept them. 
But because we bombarded by this, bombarded by it, all these, uh, the rainbow and all the LGBTQ agenda, because we bombarded by it and it coming from overseas, it coming from the mobile, especially we had the lockdown recently. You know, and people wondering how come when the lockdown open out and the schools open back, it have so much fighting in school, so much, uh, 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 what do you call it, bullying. It's because you're locked down children, right? And then you tell them they have to do work online. When they do work online, they're connected to that. They're connected to that Dajjal. So when they're supposed to be studying in front of the class, they're on something else. They're watching something else. And apart from that, apart from class time, they're hooked on it. And when they're hooked on it, YouTube, they get in, they get in a full brainwash there. Look at the recommended in YouTube. Look at the, um, what do you call it, the, 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 the trending on YouTube. Look at the, look at the style of things. Is that sort of homosexual? And is that sort of shayateen people looking like shayateen? People doing things that follow in the hawa. And your child or you yourself and we looking at this thing and just absorbing, just absorbing. 24-7 for two years straight, we were just absorbing them thing. And it changing our whole mentality, changing our what we like, what we don't like, what we accept. So they might then get a person like us, a Muslim, or even Christians who are strong in their religion. They might not get a person like that to become a homosexual, you know. But you know what they would do? They would cause you to at least shut up. And then when you stop commanding what is right and forbidding what is wrong, well then we, we destroy it again. So it goes down to the dunya. We love the love of the dunya. We would spend time behind these things. The mobile is the dunya. Our desires is the dunya. When it is we, 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 we the dunya, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions many verses in the Quran about, uh, about dunya. He also has some, they also mentioned some verses, I can't remember the verses right now, where those people who have the love of the dunya in their heart, they would have to pass through Jahannam for a time. Muslims we're talking about. So therefore, to get the love of the dunya, and to also gauge, we could also gauge our love for the dunya, you know, our worth for the dunya. You know, like, a person, if, he, if you're walking on the road and if a, a dollar fall, a five dollars fall, you would stop and pick it up. A, ten, a, a two dollars fall, you would stop and pick it up. One dollar, you would stop and pick it up. Twenty-five cents, you would stop and pick it up. But if it is you miss the opportunity to perform the sunnah before Fajr or after Zuhr, how do you feel? It doesn't, it doesn't have an effect on you. So it means that that sunnah, two rakats after Zuhr, or one subhanallah, it is worth less than 25 cents. Gauge, it, gauge your taqwa. The amount that you, you spin back and you pick up the 25 cents. But the one subhanallah that you didn't get to see, and the two rakat sunnah after, you didn't feel like in a half it. Whereas, one subhanallah, when you say subhanallah, a tree is planted in Jannah. This tree in Jannah is worth more than this entire world and what it contains. But we don't have that here. So it is a sickness. So instead, our ilah, that is why when we say la ilaha illallah, our il, the ilah, ilah means there's nothing besides Allah that is in our heart. That is why the sahaba, let me rephrase that. That is why the kuffar, why at the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they refused to accept this as yet because they understood the word ilah. They knew that when they say this word, la ilaha illallah, they would have to give up every single thing. Everything that this person, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad, everything that he is saying, I would have to accept that. They wasn't ready to do this. And then when it is, they did say it. They say, La ilaha illallah. Now it caused a whole flip in their whole disposition. From being the worst of worst, they went to being stamped and certified. Radiallahu anhu maradu an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. Shahadat, certificate they got. So that La ilaha illallah, that ilah is what we need to take out. The God, the God of the mobile, the God of time. We need to take this out. So to take this out, a little exercise. We have to remove this love of the dunya from our hearts, piece by piece, bit by bit. One thing that we can do is to spend whatever we have in excess. 
whatever excess you have at home. Wealth is not only money. Wealth is clothes. Wealth is jewelry. Wealth is uh, uh, frying pan, blender, shoes, purse, jobba. This is wealth. And we just have a whole lot of it at home. We just be flipping through the, the wardrobe looking to see and it have jobba there that we know we're not going to wear. But we tell yourself, we might wait. But you ain't wait for years. And you have, you have things put down there from since when you get married. It's thin in the box. Iron and, 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 and blender and these things. You're not using it. But your heart connected to it. So therefore, the exercise to take out the dunya from your heart is to go home, gather it up. Look what you have. See what you have extra. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us this remedy. He said, Ya Ibn Adam, an tabdul al-fadla khayrun laka wa an tumsiku sharrun lak. O oh, son of Adam, for you to spend the excess is better for you, and to hold it, it is bad for you. So the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us this, this, this um, formula. To give the excess, so you go home and you look for what you have in excess, and then you give it out. When it is, you go home and you start to do that. You would, you would, you would hear the promise of shaitan coming one time. You, would, you want to hear Iblis talk? Go home and try it. You will hear him talk. Shaitan, he promises you that you will be poor. And he commands you to do wrong things. So as soon as you take up that iron or the blender, Iblis will come and say, nah, you, you could sell this, you know. Put it on Facebook, you will sell it, you will get a few dollars. You will never use it for five years. But now he come and tell you, the thoughts would come. That is Shaitan speaking to you. He telling you, nah, you will get poor, you will need this. You got to use this, now nah, don't give away that. But you're not using it for years gone by. So that is the whispers of the shaitan. Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. Look at the word that Allah used. Allah, there's the continuation of the same verse. Eh? Shaitan promises you poverty and Allah promises you forgiveness and fadl. The same word that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used in the hadith to spend the fadl, spend the excess. Allah says that he promising you excess. So when it is you go against the whispers of the shaitan and you collect it and you give it out, that is when you would feel you're going against your nafs, you're going against shaitan. And then when you give it, you would feel the breath of fresh air. You would feel nice. And you keep doing like that until it becomes part of you. That is one. And the second thing is when it is you are asked, whenever you are asked for something, you give. Because you know when you go home and you start collecting things, you're looking to see what you don't use, what you're not using, and you're collecting, really and truly you're taking what you want to give away. But when it is you are asked, you are asked now from things that you might be willing to give and you might ask, be asked from things that you're not willing to give. And this is not only material things we're talking about. We're talking about something simple as time. Somebody asking you to give spam a few minutes now. You know, you don't like to waste your... You do, we humans don't like other people to waste our time. We can waste our time, but we don't like other people to waste our time. So when someone come and ask you for time, give it. Someone come and ask you, give me a little, spare me a few minutes now or some advice. He's asking for advice. Give your time, put off what he was doing, give it. And you will see that. Your wife asking you for time, your wife asking you for love, your wife asking you for attention, your children asking you for attention. Put aside what you're doing, and give it. Whatever it is you are doing, understand that is dunya. Sometimes you're with your phone, you're watching a movie. Someone call and ask you for something. Your children come ask you for something. Your wife come ask you for something. See if you can leave that movie. See if you can leave that, tel that, that um, cell phone. That is the connection your phone had to your heart. You had them waiting there, you put them aside, and you're connected to this thing. So that is your ila. So to rip that away from you, you need to put it down. Be alert to these calls. These calls come in. Take it as do it. It's coming from Allah. Allah is, you want to go close to Allah. This is the objective of taqwa, right? God consciousness is to get a closeness to Allah whereby every single thing we do, it is the, we, we doing it for the sake of Allah with the intention that this is going to the next life. So one is going and taking whatever excess it is you have and spending it. And the next thing is whenever you are asked for something, you give it out. Whether it's love, it's advice, it's, it's money. Except whenever it goes against Sharia. So may Allah give us the ability, may Allah grant us taqwa, may Allah make us from amongst the muttaqeen. 
Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin.